Eric Darling here with Darling Data, and uh, we're going to continue on with some of the preview content from my upcoming T-SQL course. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who has pre-purchased it so far. Uh, your support, of course, means quite a bit to me, and uh, my chief goal right now is to not disappoint you. Um, again, this uh, content is uh, going to be part of a larger paid course. Um, if you would like to pre-purchase it, there is a link down in the video description for you to do that. Uh, the price is currently $250. That will be going up to $500 once the course is fully published. And uh, this is um, companion content to the T-SQL pre-conferences that Kendra Little and I are doing at Pass Data Community Summit. Uh, in Seattle this uh, November. And so if you are attending those, uh, don't buy it because you will get access to the content um, as part of your admission to those pre-conferences. Um, so hold your, hold your horses for that. Uh, I mean, I'm going to tell you not to. If you decide to just because you're like, Eric Darling, we love you. You're worth 250 bucks. Cool, but you know, you don't have to. Just, you know, save, save your money. Go drinking. Uh, today's video is going to be uh, about apply. Now, this is the beginner section of the content, so there's um, not going to be the advanced level of stuff that you would um, maybe normally find in content about apply. That, that is coming later. Uh, what, what we're going to do today is solve a little problem with apply and sort of dissect how apply works. Uh, we'll also look at a, an alternative to the apply syntax because sometimes looking at alternative syntax helps people understand what we're doing with apply a little bit better. Uh, but apply is one of my favorite pieces of uh, T-SQL syntax sort of generally. Uh, I was going to see if Zoom it's awake. It is wonderful. Um, apply is sort of like if a derived join in a subquery had a baby. It's a beautiful bouncing baby apply. Uh, in other, uh, in other uh, dialects of SQL, um, like Postgres, I think uh, Oracle, some other fancy ones, uh, the cross-apply syntax is fairly well equivalent to the lateral join syntax over there. Um, apparently, it was, uh, it was in the SQL standard, but it wasn't fully codified in the SQL standard as the lateral join syntax until after Microsoft had added apply to SQL Server, so apply is not uh, the like anti-SQL um, standard form of way of like way of doing it, but it is the uh, sort of equivalent uh, idea. Now apply does have two flavors. There is cross apply, which is an inner join equivalent, and then there's outer apply, which is an outer join equivalent. Um, and the problem that we're going to solve today is probably the easiest one from to help most folks uh, grasp what apply is good at. And that is the sort of top n per group problem. What we're going to look at is in the context of the Stack Overflow database is a few of the higher reputation users in the three most recent uh, badges that they've earned for being really good at overflowing stacks, right? But you, and like in your work, you might look at this in other ways, like maybe the top three, like the like the top three selling products per category, like I don't know, like bed and bath, home and garden, uh, kitchen, I don't know sneakers, right? I don't know, what, whatever product categories you have, you want to find the top three selling products for that. Things like that. Um, but So we're going to look at sort of some query patterns that don't work for that and then how apply works for that. So if you were to try this with a common table expression, and I'm not saying that it's not doable with a common table expression, just you can't do it like this. And looking at this sort of helps set up the apply syntax a little bit. So if we were to run this query, uh, which in here we're looking, we're getting the top three badges. You notice that this line right here is quoted out. And that's because in the context of this common table expression, uh, the, um, the users table, the alias for the users table, the reference for the users table down here is not visible to it yet. We can't, we can't access the users table from the common table expression up here. We can reference it if we, when, after we join to the, um, after we join to the, the common table expression down here, but it doesn't get us the result that we want. So like if we just run this and like we see what the query produces, we just produce three random badges, right? For three random users. These are just the three most recent badges earned period, right? So this doesn't get us what we want. We want the top three badges 
for the users that qualify for our query down here. So this query produces no results, right? We don't get anything back because no one with a reputation over 750,000 was in the top three badges that got earned, period, for the badges table, right? This is just like the whole thing. These people weren't in there. The other, part, the other part of it that doesn't work is if we tried to do a similar thing with a derived join. You notice I have this where clause sim similarly quoted out in here because like the, the, the user's table, the reference to the user's table isn't available inside of the derived join. We can't, we can't see it yet. We can't see it until after the join is complete and we do the on clause. You end up with the exact same problem in here, right? Selecting the top three most recent badges, none of those users have a reputation over 750,000, right? So like this returns no results as well. This is why you can't just go stick things like top into a common table expression or uh, a derived join and like, like expect it to match the results of the other stuff, right? Like it works for some things, but not for this particular task. So if we use apply, what we're able to do is a C like that reference to the users table inside of the apply. So this does end up getting a little bit more spread out than it would normally be, but it's only because I tried to put some helpful commentary in there where uh, inside we have the, we select from the users table and then we take, then we write our cross apply, right? So the cross apply is right after that. Like I said, the cross apply is like an inner join. So it comes after that from, and in here we can select the top three badges and we can uh, make sure because we're using top, now it would be the same story with offset fetch too, right? You could just as easily use offset fetch instead of top here, just like offset zero rows, fetch next three rows. But in here we're using top because it, it's, it's, it's faster to write. <laughs> no other reason. Uh, that and most people in T-SQL will write top just sort of like muscle memory, right? Top, whatever. Um, so, but with top we need order by. And because this order by on the date column, uh, the date column is not unique, right? We, we might have duplicates in here. We do need to have our unique tiebreaker here, this ID column. The ID is the clustered primary key of the badges table. So this is our unique tiebreaker in case there are any uh, duplicates in the date column, right? That's a critical thing that you need. Uh, when you are ordering by uh, date, when you're ordering by a column that might have duplicates in it, because it's considered non-deterministic, right? You get different results without that unique tiebreaker. But inside of the apply, we are able to see that outer reference to the users table here, right? We can see this inside of the apply, which means that we, when we run this query, we'll actually get back the results that we want, which are the users with a reputation of over 750,000, right? Let's, uh, we can validate that looking in here. Everyone here, the, the lowest one is 754,947. And we get, uh, as, as long as there are three badges, uh, like, they're, like as long as they've earned three badges, you'll see three badges for each person. Now, this is the sort of interesting thing about apply is that, you know, you can say you want like the top however many, but if that however many don't exist, you only get back like the, you only get back however many results actually do exist. So like, let's say we said top 10, but one person had only earned nine badges, we'd only get nine rows for them. You can't invent a row to send back for them. And we're not going to send back just a random duplicate row because that, that would be insane, right? So the, like you get the top however many are available, like for your, like to, until your top is either met or we run out of rows to find. So this, give, this does give us the correct results, which is wonderful. So now let's dissect a little bit more how apply works so that everyone can understand the majesty of this query, right? So um, the other queries didn't work because again, it's sort of like you were saying, uh, select the top three badges of whatever, but like just changing this query to hit the users table and do a simple in to figure out who uh, like which users earned just the top three most recent badges ever in here, you'll see that we get back three kind of random people and none of them have a reputation even close to 750,000, right? Maybe they do now, maybe they're a fantastic, like just amazing stack overflow database users at this point. I don't know, I, I don't follow their careers. i uh, be honest with you, I, I don't, don't care that much. But like, like those three people were not in, did not meet that 750,000 reputation goal. 
So the way that apply works is sort of like if we take that, like the initial starting query, right? Like, let's say that we know we want to find like what, like our basic starting point is we want to select these columns from the users table. And all that we care about are users who have a reputation of over 750,000. And when we supply our results back to, you know, whatever application, web, front end, whatever, we, whatever you want to call it, we want those results ordered by reputation descending. And then for any, if there are any duplicates, the ID column descending, right? We need that unique tiebreaker to make sure uh, the results come back in a sort of uh, reliable, reliable uh, order every single time. These are, these are the people we get back. So these six rows, all right? We get, of course, John Skeet. We get Balassi, I'm not sure who that is. We get Darren Dimitrov, sounds very smart. We get Von C, I've seen that name around. We get Hans Passant, uh, some sort of German French mas mashup there, perhaps, perhaps a Belgian, I don't know. You can't tell. And then we have Mark Gravel right here, rounding out the list with 754,947. So the this is our starting query and these are the results from our starting query. The way apply works is sort of like for every row that pr your starting query produces, apply the result of the cross apply query to that row. So that's why we get three rows back for John Skeet and three rows back for Balassi and so on down the list, because we take, we apply that top three query to the results of this query. And just to sort of go a little bit further with that, you know, again, like this is the, this is the query inside of the cross apply just without the, the correlation in here. So what we need to say is for each user that qualifies for our where clause, apply this query result to that. Now you could absolutely do this with a derived join or a common table expression. You just have to write the query a little bit differently. Uh, another common approach to this is to use the row number window function and to uh, get a result, like, like generate a row number over that result and then filter on the row number after that result has been, uh, after that result has been produced. So in here we're saying where, the, remember the alias for the row number inside of the derived join is n, right? That's this thing right here. So we're saying where n is less than or equal to three. Now, just to kind of make this a little bit easier to uh, understand, I'm just going to edit this query really quickly. And let's grab, let's look at this again. And so these are our top six users. We're just going to grab this number, 22656. And then in here, we're just going to change this for a minute, where b.userID equals 22656. And we're just going to run this result on its own because there's no correlation inside of a derived join. Again, you can't access the stuff outside of a derived join within the derived join. So there's no correlation to the user's table inside of this. So we can just run this without an error and we can just see what the results are for one user, right? So if we run this, we're going to get back uh, this result. And this is, these are going to be the top three most recent badges for this particular user ID. Right, we got a good answer, a nice answer, and a great answer. Oh, what a fantastic answer! And we have that ordered by uh, date descending in here, and of course we have this ordered by ID. If there, were, I don't think no, I don't see any duplicate dates in there. But uh, if there were any duplicate dates in in here, then the ID would act as the tiebreaker to differentiate between those duplicate rows. Like I said, you could you like with a duplicate. Uh, when you order by a, a column with duplicates in it, the result is considered non-deterministic. So what we, we get the same result back for this one. We, do, we just take on a slightly different query format with it. So let's get rid of this where clause because we don't need this anymore. That was purely a display model query. And let's run this and you'll see that we get back the same thing. Well, now we have this, this column in here. All right, it's n123, 123 over and over again. Uh, so I guess this could be useful if you wanted to quickly eyeball anyone who may not have had uh, that may not have had the top three badges in there. Maybe someone who only earned two badges. They somehow accumulated that much reputation without ever um, doing anything really spectacular, I guess. Uh, but we we get all the same sort of information. We get the same sort of set of information back from that. So uh, that's 
uh, a bit about how apply works. Um, hopefully it helps you understand the syntax for it and at least one application <laughs> for apply uh, that you can where you can use it to uh, solve interesting query riddles uh, without breaking your back with and typing a whole lot more than you might if you start using window and functions. Um, there are some performance considerations around this stuff, but you know there's only so much time in the in the preview material for me to spend on things. So uh, you're just you're just gonna have to wait. For the full video on that but you only get the full video if you buy the training but anyway thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed yourselves i hope you learned something and i will see you in the next video where we will do some more of this fun t-sql learning stuff anyway thank you for watching i'm out of here goodbye